In this video, we will create this disintegration logo animation inside Blender 3.6. And at the end, you will have a template that you can drop any image to make it disintegrate. Let's start by adding a mesh plane and renaming it to logo. Then go to Geometry Nodes workspace and create a new setup. We don't need the initial geometry. Add a mesh primitive grid. Search for image texture node and add it to the setup. Choose your logo here. I open up this Coca-Cola logo. It's a PNG image with a transparent background. In order to view it with the grid, we need more vertices. So I set these to 100. Plug the UV map of the grid into the image vector. Since our logo image is a rectangle and this grid is square, right now it is squished on x-axis. I can increase this grid X size, but I want this setup to work with any given image. So what we can do is keep the height of the grid as it is and change the width based on the input image width to height ratio. To get that information about the input image, I add image info node. Choose the logo from here as well. Now to calculate the width to height ratio, I drag from the width and divide it by height and plug that into size x. You can see our grid scaled itself to fit the image. But this introduces us to a new issue. Our faces are stretched now. This is not a huge issue for us at the moment but why not, let's fix it. Let's adjust this vertices x amount to get more squared faces. I add an integer input node and rename it to resolution. This will control our height vertices amount. I multiply that with the ratio we calculated earlier. This will give us how many vertices we need for the width based on the height vertices amount. But since it is a decimal number, I use a flow math node after this to remove the decimal points and plug that into our vertices x amount. We got it to work. Make sure to plug this into resolution. Now when I change the resolution amount, you can see it adjusting the vertices amount to have almost zero stretch. Also I want the logo to face forward so use a transform node and rotate this 90 degrees on the x axis. To create the points or particles, I use distribute points on faces node. We can use this density to increase the points amount. To distribute points only on the logo area, I plug this logo image alpha into the selection socket. Then plug a multiply node to density and set the first value to something like 100. This way I can change the second value to add more points quickly. Right now, points are too big to see clearly. So I add a set point radius node and decrease the point size. To create the disintegrating effect, first I need to create a mask for the disintegrating area. For that, I add an empty sphere to the scene and drag it to the setup. Set it to relative. Then add a position node and calculate the distance between the point's position and the empty's location using vector math distance node. After that, take that distance and check whether it is less than or equal to the empty's scale. This way, I can mark the point that are inside the empty sphere. This is a technique that I use a lot in my geometry nodes tutorials. To update this mask with the animation, we can use the newly added simulation nodes. So add a simulation zone like this. To update the mask, first we need to store it somewhere. Then we can use that and add the current frame mask to update it. And it goes on a loop every frame. I add a store attribute node and set the type to boolean. I call it point mask. Now plug this to here. To update this, I add a name attribute node and find our point mask attribute and use add math node to add these together. Check the clan. 
To view the mass, I duplicate this and view it with the simulation output. Now when I hit play and move the empty, you can see it updates the mass. So I animate the empty's location and scale to create that disintegrating area. Now let's move these disintegrating points. I add set position node. To move only the points we are masking, duplicate this and plug it to the selection socket. Then add a small set axis offset. We got the foundation for our effect. Now I want to delete these disintegrating points after some time. For that I am going to calculate their age after they started to move. So add a store attribute node and set it to integer. I call it age. To calculate the age I get the current age from a name attribute node and add 1 to it. This will add 1 to the age every frame. Since I only want to add 1 to the points which are masked, change this math type to multiply add and multiply this with the mass, then add 1. Now plug this to store attribute. To delete the points, I add delete geometry node. Now use our age and check whether it is greater than or equal to let's say 40 and plug it to selection socket. Now when I hit play, it deletes the disintegrating points after 40 frames. To turn these points into something visible in the render, I add instances on points node after the simulation. Then add an icosphere as an instance. Reduce the scale to something like 0.02. Increase the subdivision and use set shade smooth node to smooth the shading. To create a fall off in our instance's size over time, I use our age and remap it using a map range node. Set the from max to our maximum age and switch these two values. Plug that to scale. Use a multiply node here to reduce the maximum scale. Now you can see our point size are decreasing with the age. Let's add some randomness to the maximum age. Use a random value node here and set the minimum and maximum age to 30 and 45. Use that here as well. I also randomize the instance scale. To polish our masking, we can add some noise to it. Right now you can clearly see it is a circular mask. This will be more and more noticeable once you increase the points amount. So to add a bit of distortion to the mask, we can distort this point's position a little bit. For that I add a color mix node and plug a noise texture to be input. Set the blend type to linear light and reduce the factor to something like 0.175. Let's view our mask. Adjust the texture values to get a distortion you like. Now let's add some distortion to the disintegrating points as well. I plug a vector math add node to offset. Add a set offset and also a bit on the x-axis. This will give our points a little side movement. Then add a noise texture and plug a map range node to it. Set the mean to minus 1. This will remap the noise texture's default 0 to 1 values to minus 1 to 1, giving us movement in all directions. To control the noise strength, I add a scale node and plug that to here and set the scale to something like 0.1. And just like that, we added some noise movement to the points. 
change the noise texture values to get different results. Let's work on the material. I add a new material. This will be our logo points material. Add it to the setup using set material node. I need the points to grab the color from the logo texture. To do that, I add a sample near a surface node here and plug the grid to the mesh. Set the type to vector. Plug the grid's UV map to the value. This way, we can sample the nearest surface for each point on the grid and grab its UV value. Then, I store it here. Since this is a UV map, you can either use vector or 2D vector. Plug this to value and I call this attribute points UV. Let's view it with this simulation. You can see although the points started to move, it kept the previously sampled UV data. Make sure if you are viewing this with the instances, you have to change the domain type to instances. Now in the shade editor, I add an attribute node and access that attribute. It's not working. We have to set this to instancer. Now I delete the principal PSDF node. Add image texture and select the logo. Plug this to vector. Our points got the logo color. These dark red values come from the alpha value of the logo image. So to make those transparent, I add an emission shader and a transparent shader along with a mix shader. Plug the color to emission color and alpha to mix factor. To see the transparency in EV, in material settings, I set this to alpha blend. Also set the shadows to none and turn off back faces. Now let's add the logo image as well and mask it out with the effect. We created this mask for our points, but it will not work for the grid. So I run another simulation to get another mask. Since I want an exact similar distribution for the new mask, I select all these nodes and add them to a group. All we need is this attribute name as an input. I call this node group mask. I drag from the grid, add a reroute node and join it with the instances. Then add another simulation zone like this. Duplicate this store attribute node to here and call it logo mask. Let's plug the mask group to here. Change this input name to logo mask as well. Add a material to the grid and I call it logo. I add another store attribute node and store our grid's UV map as well. Now back in the shade editor, I copy these nodes from points material and paste it in logo material. Here use that UV map in the shade editor. I set the blend mode to alpha clip and shadows to none. Right now, we can see our points even before they started to disintegrate. It's a easy fix. Just plug our points mask to this selection socket. This way, it only instance in points which are in the mask. Like that. Now, all left to do is make the logo disappear. We already created a mask for that. Let's use that. We called it logo mask. Actually, we want the inverse of this, so I use a color ramp and flip the sliders. Then multiply it with the image alpha. And just like that, we got ourselves a disintegrating logo animation. Here I set the world color to black. Now, you can change any of these values to get the exact look you want for the disintegrating animation. Also, to change the noise pattern with time, I set this noise texture to 4D and plug a multiply node with a scene time node. 
set the multiply value to something like 0.2. This will offset the noise texture with time. Using a random value node, you can randomize the noise strength as well. To create a template out of this, I add a group input node and extract any necessary values, for example, of a resolution. Here I extracted our logo texture image input and used that exact input to this one as well. This way you can extract values like point density, scale, noise movement, age and etc. Then in the layout workspace, I make two windows here and select our two materials and pin them to each window. Now if I want to change the image, all I have to do is open it from here and select it in other two places. You might have to change the animation of the MP a little bit. And that's it, that's our disintegrating logo animation. If you are interested in more simulation notes effects, check these videos out. I'll see you there.